Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Westminster Presbyterian Church. We are glad you are worshiping with us, both here in the sanctuary and those of you joining us online. If you are joining us online, today is a communion Sunday, so we invite you to gather the elements uh, for that. And here in person, you should have received the small communion um, lunchable, as I call it, if you have not received that there in the back. If you have a prayer request in the sanctuary, we'll be taking the prayer request cards during the second hymn. And online, you can leave your prayer requests in the comment section. Uh, we invite you to pass the friendship pads down the pew. Are there any announcements today? All right. Let us worship our Lord with the call to worship, stand in body or in spirit. Give the Lord the glory. Do God's name. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. When we gather to praise God, we remember that we are people who have preferred our will to his. Accepting in God's power to become a new person in Christ, let us confess ourselves before God and one another. Merciful God, in baptism you promise forgiveness and new life, making us part of the body of Christ. We confess that we remain focused on ourselves, separated from our family of faith. We cling to destructive habits, hold grudges, and show reluctance to welcome one another. We allow the past to hold us hostage. In your loving kindness, have mercy on us and free us from sin. Remind us of your promise you make baptism so that we may rise to new life and live together in grace. Amen. 
Amen. Ezekiel writes, I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. A new heart I will give you, a new spirit I will put within you, and I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. This is the good news. Thanks be to God. As people loved, forgiven, and freed, hear these words from, from Proverbs. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to God, and God will make your paths straight. Amen. Ordinarily, uh, the Ministry of Music comes at this point in the service, and today, you're it. You are the Ministry of Music. So, uh, sit up straight, do a good job, we'll see how this works out. Now is the time in our service for a special message for the children of God. And we are all God's children, so we are all invited at this time. So anyone can come forward who would like to. And we're going to scoot over this way today. Welcome, welcome. Good spot, good spot. All right, who knows what this is? Does anyone know what this is called? Baptismal font. Oh, what did Blake just what Pastor Blake say? Baptismal font. It's the baptismal font. This is where we keep the water for baptism. And baptism is when we sprinkle some water on on your head, right? And sometimes we do it when you're little bitty babies, and sometimes we do it when we're grown-ups, but it doesn't really matter when we're baptized because God's love is for everyone. And when Jesus was baptized, he wasn't a little bitty baby. He was a grown person. And he went all the way into a river. Some people do that. Some people get all the way in, like a bathtub almost, and get all the way in. But we just sprinkle a little water. And when Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit descended. 
and said, this is my beloved son, and I love him. And so when we're baptized, God says to us, we are God's beloved children. God loves us and will always love us. And God loves us whether we're baptized or not, but this is a way that we symbolize that in church. Isn't that cool? So it's kind of like getting a bath, but a little, a little less messy, right? Has ever, who here has been baptized? Were you baptized as a little baby? Were you grow up baptized? No, nope, that's okay, because we can get baptized at any time in our life. You're not a baby. I was baptized when I was like 12 or 13, so I wasn't a baby either. You're not a baby. I know, Miss Freya. You, you are a big girl. You, you are not a baby anymore, and that's perfect, because we don't have to be a baby to get baptized, because God's love is for everyone. And today we're going to hear a little bit more about baptism, all right? So let's say a prayer. <laughs> Loving God, we are so... We are so grateful for your baptism, for this holy water. <laughs> and we praise your name, that you call us your own children and you love us. In your name we pray, amen. amen. Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth. Make us hungry for this heavenly food, that it may nourish us today in the ways of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John. We read from chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother, his brothers, and his disciples, and they remained there a few days. Our next hymn is 10,000 Reasons. We invite you to uh, hold up prayer request cards as the ushers collect them. It uh, really wasn't my intention to sing only things you had no idea uh, what they were today. But, uh, you know, usually we got the choir here to help us out, and it didn't work out today. So hang in there. Uh, let us stand and offer our songs to God.
You may be seated. Let us pray. Be with us, gracious God, as we come to your word. May we hear your words of life for us and be renewed by what we hear. Strengthen our faith. Keep the hope of the gospel ever before us. It is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. There's a reason we read a text about a wedding on the day in which we remember the baptism of Jesus. It's not especially good, but you may as well hear it. Um, so most of the Roman Catholic Church, many of the mainline churches, uh, so the Lutherans and the Episcopalians and the Presbyterians, we follow a three-year lectionary that's uh, worked out, and it's a way to show our unity in Christ, and it's remarkable how much it helps to know that all around the country, uh, pastors are preaching on the same stuff. And I believed in that and did that for a very long time and uh, found that after 30 years of preaching the three-year revised common lectionary, all the sermons started sounding the same, uh, but they may do that anyway. We don't know. Uh, so we did a new lectionary, a narrative lectionary, that focuses on teaching Bible stories. The fall is the Old Testament, the spring is the New Testament, the summer is preacher potluck. And so um, that's why we're here, because we're following this new narrative lectionary that tells the stories of the Bible in the hopes that we remember and learn them. And it seems to me that weddings and baptisms have kind of a common thing going together. And to help us understand this common thing between weddings and baptisms, I'm going to use a quote that I have used at a lot of weddings. Um, I found you can kind of reuse material at weddings because you got a new crowd every time. And so here is a quote from Paul Reiser. The problem is, when two people get married, there is no more business of your own. Your own business is closed. You've merged and gone public. You have to run everything by the partners. And like all businesses, the partners, that is, the couple, while they engage in endless meetings to discuss areas of management concern and the division of labor. He provides us with the transcript of one such meeting. You know, we really should call the post office and tell them to hold our mail while we're away. We? You mean me, don't you? No, I mean we. I didn't say you. I said we. You or me. Oh, really? Are you going to ever call the post office? A moment to think. No. Then you mean me, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's how couples begin to be people together. And that's why marriage represents a new thing, a new state of life, and why so much of the marriage ceremony will talk about this new connection, this new life that couples have begun together. Because it is. It's something altogether new. It's something altogether different. Maybe some of you remember what it was like to buy that first car or go on that first vacation. It wasn't all joy and bliss. It took a little bit of negotiation. It took a little bit of humility to discover that, why no, someone else has a stake in all this and you aren't going to get your way. So that's the truth about married life. It represents a new state and Jesus is there at this wedding 
to celebrate with a couple this new state of life that they're going to enter into. Um, we have no record that doves were ever released at Jewish ceremonies in Jesus' time. But we do know they were lavish ceremonies for people that were relatively poverty-stricken. But you would still feast for a week when there was a wedding. And the crowd would sort of diminish as time went on, but it was still the obligation of the host to keep this feast going. And we have kind of a crucial moment in the wedding celebration when they discover that they have run out of wine. And uh, there is no chance to run to the 24-hour store in Jesus' day. It's just not a possibility. And so what are they going to do? And Jesus' mother comes and speaks with him. And Jesus gives kind of a terse reply. And I've always liked the fact that, well, he sounded tough, he wound up doing exactly what she wanted. And um, maybe that's, that's also an insight into families and into family life. So, they fill these large stone jars. Stone jars are significant because they don't require extra purification like a uh, clay jar would, which could be ritually unclean, but the stone jars they knew were good. And so the stone jars are filled with water, and then the wine comes out. Uh, this can only be described as a miraculous event. And there's no reason to explain it away or to try to make it easier to, to swallow. Um, this, the very purpose of it, was to show that God was in charge of these events and that Jesus is being launched into his ministry. He's launched in a way that involves the common life of people and in a way that shapes the way they live together. He's there in the midst of human celebration and that's something we get to take away from this. He's there for us in the big parts of human life. Um, the image of abundance is an image that goes through the Gospel of John. In fact, Jesus will say that I came that people might have the abundant life. And this image of abundance should be one that we think about in a world where so often Scarcity and need govern our choices. If we looked at the world and said, there's enough, in fact, there's plenty, and maybe I don't have to hoard things, but I can be generous and open-handed. I'm not talking about losing our senses or assuming we can not prepare for our future but let's just take as our overall look at life that there's enough here. There'll be enough for ourselves and we can graciously share. That's part of the image of abundance that Jesus comes to show to the world. And this is part of the hope of the gospel that comes through in this passage. There's enough we can freely share, there will be enough thanks to the grace of God. The stories about baptism are always stories that tell us uh, that Jesus went to John the Baptist, and these are stories that you can find in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. The Gospel of John doesn't really have a baptism story. Uh, he does reference John. He talks about John's baptism, but we don't really have Jesus in the water with John. And in those other stories, we always 
recognize that Jesus is doing something that he doesn't need to do. That in the baptism for repentance, for the forgiveness of sins, he's not the one who needs to forgive or needs to be forgiven, rather. He's the one that offers forgiveness. And yet, again, he will put himself in our place to do those things common to human life. And in doing that, we have a reminder that Jesus has been where we go. He knows what human life is about. And therefore, we have a companion we can always talk to, even when life is difficult, even when the partners have to have another meeting to get things worked out. How about soccer games? Or who picks up who? Or who forgot to pick up who? All of those things are part of the new and common life that we have together. At the end of the passage, it says that Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee. As you read through the Gospel of John, you'll discover that there are more signs, maybe six or seven or eight. It kind of depends on how you break them up. But they're referred to, and they become sort of the, the touchstone as we move through Jesus' life and see the way in which he fulfills our hopes and points us in the direction of new life. As we look at this sign that gives gracious love to the key parts of human life, and as we look at this sign that reminds us that God's incarnation is an incarnation that touches us, even in our most human moments, we can give thanks, just as they must have given thanks when suddenly there was all they needed to have a great celebration. Let us stand and affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let us now offer our gifts to God. If you're watching at home, we invite you to uh, support the work of the church through the online opportunities that exist either on the church app or on the church website. Let us now offer our gifts to God.
let us pray. Holy God, we are not our own. We belong to you. You have created us and given us life anew. O oh God, our creator and savior and sustainer, we extend our arms and open our hands to present our offering to you. We make these gestures to display outwardly our heart's overflowing gratitude for all your gifts. Receive these gifts from us, O triune God, and through them bring hope and life to many. Amen. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. People will come from east and west and from north and south and sit at table in the kingdom of God. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share the feast which he has prepared. Hear, excuse me, hear the words of institution of the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is the new cup, this is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving grace of the living, the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes again. With thanksgiving, let us offer God our grateful praise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O God of mercy and might. In your wisdom you made all things and sustained them by your power. You have called forth people in every age to be your servants and to speak your word. When we rebelled against your call and turned from your ways, in your love you called us back to you. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You sent prophets to call us to justice and compassion. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the choirs of heaven and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, in whom you have revealed yourself, our light and our salvation. Baptized in Jordan's waters, Jesus took his place with sinners, and your voice proclaimed him your beloved. Your spirit anointed him to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, to, release, to restore sight to the blind, to free the oppressed. He lived among us in power and grace, touching broken lives with your healing peace. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. 
remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and this wine and joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we await the day of his coming. With thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. According to his commandment, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. We have these prayer requests this day as Teresa Hagenbaugh requests prayers for the family, uh, for the friend of a family member who has COVID, prayers of thankfulness for the niece of Sandy and Jack White who is pregnant with her second child. Unfortunately, the niece has COVID at this time. Sandy White requests prayers for a dear friend as she adjusts to her new home. Diane Demers requests prayers for strength and courage for a friend who lives alone and has just learned she has cancer. We pray for those who have COVID and we remember those who are dear to our hearts whom we pray for in silence now. O oh God, as you once claimed us in the Spirit's waters and number us among your own beloved, give us power to do your work, to show your love, and to live holy and joyful lives. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes again in final victory and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Eat of it, all of you. Friends, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Do this in remembrance of him. Let us pray together. We thank, thank you, O God, God, that, that through, through word and sacrament, sacrament you have given us your Son, who is, who is the, the true, true bread, bread from heaven and food of eternal life. 
So strengthen us in your serving that our daily living may show our thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.